I bring people together. When my mom or my dad, uncles, aunties, friends and family, they ask me exactly what it is that I do, I tell them that I run a community organization called Tea with Strangers. And they ask me what kind of community is Tea with Strangers, and I say it's a community community. And they look at me like I'm, like I'm quite stupid, and they say, no, but what's the point of the community? What do you guys center around? Is it religious? Is it spiritual? Is it social? Is it political? And I don't exactly know how to answer it, because I know that it's not religious, it's not spiritual, it's not social, and it's not political. And despite having grown this community to a few cities, bringing together thousands of people for tens of thousands of hours of long-winded conversations, I still have a lot of difficulty putting my finger on exactly what it is that Tea with Strangers does, besides bringing people together. And at a certain point, I wondered, do I need to really explain much further? So I asked a few of our community members exactly what they told people when they asked them, what is Tea with Strangers? And my favorite answer came from a community member named Simo. And Simo said, well, it's simple. I just tell them that we bring people together for tea with strangers. And I looked at him and I said, thank you for trying to help me. I appreciate it. Um, I'll go on. And then he said, no, let me explain. You have tea, an accessible drink that everyone can get, something that during a conversation you can sip on just to fill an awkward pause, but it's not so disruptive that the conversation gets distracted from. With, you're implying a sense of inclusion, that you have to do this with other people and that you can't do it alone. Strangers, people that you don't know yet, so you're in no place to actually make any sort of judgment about them. You have no preconceived notions of who they are, so to actually understand them, you need to approach them with a sense of curiosity and openness. And it's plural, meaning that you have to do it in groups. It's not a one-on-one -on -one activity. And I looked at him, just my eyes wide, because I'm the one that made up the name Tea with Strangers, and he's the one explaining it to me in a sense that I've never even thought about it before. Because that's exactly what we do. Tea with Strangers is a community of people that bring together other people in big cities for meaningful conversations and experiences, and that primarily manifests itself in something called tea time. It's a two-hour conversation with a few strangers and a host where they talk about anything and everything. There's no topic or theme, and the role of the host is just to plant seeds. They ask questions, they'll listen, they'll make sure that everyone feels a sense of inclusion. And what happens at these conversations is really unbelievable. And just the same way I have so much difficulty explaining what it is that Tea with Strangers is, I have so much difficulty explaining why these conversations are so special. But what I often make a habit of is at the end of tea time, I'll ask everyone at the table, what are you thinking? And an answer I'll almost always get is some variant of this. I don't even know what just happened, but it was really good. I haven't had a conversation like this in ages, and it's funny because two hours ago, you guys didn't even exist to me, and now I feel this sense of unusual connection to all of you. Now, if you think about the way that tea is made, it's very simple. You have two ingredients. You have leaves and you have water. You put them in a pot and you boil it, and suddenly you have tea. But if you put those two ingredients together and did anything else besides heating the water, if you shook it, if you froze it, if you stirred it, you wouldn't have tea, you would just end up with leaves and water. But all you need is heat. And I think similarly, at tea time, what happens is you bring people together and the host brings some heat to create a meaningful exchange. But nothing besides that is particularly special because we have people around us every single day. So why is it that those meaningful connections aren't quite happening? Why is it that people should come to tea time to actually feel this sense of meaningful exchange. And I ask myself this question, not as somebody who happens to connect meaningfully with every single person I walk by. I have trouble asking people questions, and I'm often afraid that they're gonna judge me or, or whatever it may be if I sat next to somebody on the train and I said hello. I don't even do it. Tea time is probably the only environment where I have these meaningful connections. It's the only environment where maybe you would say that the water is even boiling. 
But it begs the question in this analogy, what is the difference between boiling water and not boiling water? Now let's say that in any given day, I pass by 100 people on the train, on the street, in cafes, restaurants, at events like this. I have this really bad habit where I look at people, I look at the way their hair is cut, I look at the way that they, they, they stand, I look at the way that they talk to people, I'll look at the color of their skin and, and everything about them and I'll size them up. I'll develop an idea of who this person is and I'll put them in a bucket. And the reason that I do this is because it makes it easier for me to decide how to respond to these people. How do I treat these people? If I can get a sense of who they are based on my own preconceived notions, then maybe I'll know how to react to them. And there's two things wrong with this. The first is that I'm wrong. I'm, I'm always wrong about my preconceived notion as far as who somebody is. And in that wrongness is the second problem, is that it's disrespectful. It reduces someone's individuality, someone's humanity, to some bucket that you've created in your own head. And I've talked to a lot of people about this problem, and I realize that I'm not the only person that does it. As a matter of fact, we all do. In last February, just, over, just about a year ago, I hosted a tea time with five strangers where I did this exact thing. We had five people. We had Anne, Ethan, Ben, Samrina, and Jeffrey. They showed up at a cafe in Palo Alto, California, and we sat together at a table. Anne arrived a little bit late. She was wearing yoga pants and a sweatshirt. Samrina had business casual dress on as if she just came from her consulting job or banking job. Ben had this way about him. You can see him with his tongue sticking out right there. He had this way about him where everything he said had 10 exclamation marks at the end of it, even if he was just saying hello. It was a little weird, to be honest. And, and I had a really bad haircut that day, so there was plenty of judgments just waiting to be passed around. And we sat there awkwardly, just waiting for some conversation to start, some common thread that might build a little bit of rhythm and reduce the discomfort of not knowing each other. And I think it was Samrina that said, I'm really looking forward to the weekend. And gently I asked, why? What's going on this weekend? And she said, well, I'm meeting this guy that I've been talking to for the last few weeks over the phone and on video chat, and I'm going to get to spend this weekend with him. And since we don't actually know each other, it's a little uncomfortable to say, tell us more, because it's private. But Ben, being the, the type of person that throws 10 exclamation marks at the end of everything he says, says, tell us more, who is this guy? And Samrina is thrilled to talk about him. She inches up in her chair, her eyes light up, she starts talking a little bit faster, a little bit louder, about how a month ago she went to a wedding and she met this person that she connected with deeply. They got along so well, but the problem was he lived a short flight away. So they talked over the phone and on video chat, and now he was finally coming to California to spend a weekend together. And it made me think about all the relationships that I was really grateful for. So I posed a question to the group, and I asked them, what's a relationship that you're really grateful for? Not necessarily romantic, just any sort of relationship. And one by one, Anne talked about her best friend from college. Ben talked about a mentor who had been helping him through a project he was working on. Jeffrey talked about a coworker that he really got along with that was making him feel really comfortable at his new workplace. Ethan was talking about a hero of his that he'd been following on the internet and he finally grew the courage to email him and now they had been developing a good exchange. Samrina obviously is talking about this boy that she can't wait to see this weekend. I talk about my best friend Zubin who you guys just heard speak right before. And very quickly, it seemed like Anne's yoga pants and her sweatshirt said nothing about who she was. And Samrina's pre-professional garb didn't mean anything. And Ben's excitement wasn't seen as very unusual because now all of us had 10 exclamation marks after everything we were saying because now we were just as excited as he was. We just needed a little nudge. Six strangers sitting awkwardly at a table at a cafe in Palo Alto suddenly became six strangers sitting excitedly, connected by stories of friendship and gratitude after just two hours. And it begs the question, what heated the water? What turned this pot of leaves and water into tea? When Samrina said that I was looking forward to the weekend and when I asked why, when she shared an answer and Ben dropped his inhibitions and actually jumped in to say, tell us more. When I thought of a question and presented it to the whole group and gave everyone permission to share their own story, and when everyone responded to that question 
with their own honest sharing. Time, patience, empathy, curiosity, a desire to learn about one another, but most importantly, a sense of permission to actually take that curiosity and do something with it. And it hit me that that's exactly what Tea Time offers, permission. And that's why we have hosts, because the host is a person that makes it okay to ask questions. They express their own curiosity to make it seem normal, because apparently it's a little bit weird to show interest in somebody else, because what if they don't respond particularly well? And it's scary. But if one person does it, you turn the stove on, and maybe the water starts warming up, and everyone else starts contributing their own heat, and now you actually have tea. And that's exactly what Tea with Strangers offers. Tea with strangers. Something to gather around tea. A reason to come together with. And a space with no assumptions or, or, or preconceived ideas about one another. Strangers. So what is it that I do when people ask me that question? I run a community organization of people who are really, really good at boiling water. People that can turn leaves and water into tea because all of us have the ingredients that we need. The people are all around us. We have time. There's plenty of questions to be asked and stories to be shared. All we need is heat. Thank you.